Hi guys, my name is Connor Hofford. Uh, we're here at Oaks at the uh, Mid-Atlantic Indoor Nationals. And this is my 1984 uh, Volkswagen Rabbit GTI. Uh, it has a full chassis, uh, LS motor, and four-speed Muncie Trans, uh, narrowed Ford nine-inch rear. And it was a SEMA car in 2017. Uh, it was featured in Hot Rod Magazine and PVW. It has a full custom interior. The body is pretty much stock, has BBS RS wheels that still have the German look to it. Four inch wide in the front, 10 inch wide in the back. So it was a front wheel drive, four cylinder. Okay, so yeah. you converted it to rear wheel drive, right? Yep, is that yep. correct? Okay. It's a full, two, full chassis. Um, it's a six liter from a truck, uh, LS3 top end. Okay, nice. And you know how much power are you pushing that? Um, probably a somewhere around 550, I'd say, okay. at the crank. Do you know the weight ratio of the car or the weight of the car? No, I would guess maybe somewhere between like 2,000 and 2,500 pounds. Wow, that thing's a rocket ship. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun to drive, <laughs> yeah, especially at the four speed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when I was building this car, um, I really wanted to keep the outside of the car looking like a rabbit, keep it clean. So this is actually the battery kill switch now. And then the uh, gas cap is just behind the license plate like a lot of you know 70s cars had. Uh, just to clean things up a bit. What was your, your inspiration for the interior? Because it's very simple, and then you hide the gauge like to the top and everything like that. Yeah, I just wanted to keep the interior smooth and, and like you said, fairly simple. I wanted to keep the red stitching in it and stuff. You know, it has uh, aluminum, a custom aluminum uh, transmission tunnel that I made for it. VW Beetle pedal pads. I made all, the whole pedal assembly. I made the whole dash. And then it's Mark 7 Volkswagen plaid uh, throughout the interior. How long did it take you to build this? Because you put a lot of time into this. Um, so I built it in about three and a half, four years. And I drove it for about a year in high school uh, when it was just a stock car still. Um, it's been done since 2017. I just haven't really had a chance to take it out to too many shows. So we're trying to hit a couple more shows this year. Wow, thank you. And lastly, how, how did they find you? Oh, uh, my Instagram is uh, mk one coop. My name is Brett Stevens and this is my 1969 Super B. In the front of the car I've got a 572 blown Hemi, puts out about 900 plus horsepower. The car is an original Super B car, ton of modifications, it's a resto mod. It's on uh, an Art Morrison chassis with a bunch of body mods and uh, custom touches and uh, trying to put it on display for everyone. And you told me that you built it in, in your backyard? This build was in my backyard garage. Had two or three guys, Mark Bender, Joe Enley, who did most of the work on the car. We painted it in my backyard garage. I had an upholstery company, uh, Bell's Design, do the upholstery. But basically everything else was done in-house in my backyard garage. I'm starting to see this more now, the, the raised hood? Raised hood, the hood is a metal steel hood. Um, totally fabricated out of steel. It's on four electric actuators on an individual switch, and I press the switch and the hood will raise or, raise or lower all in unison all the way down flat. In the back of the car, it's a uh, 2012 Charger taillight assembly, totally fabricated in metal housing. Um, we redid the deck lid. The fuel tank is underneath. All the electrical components are on the left side here. And on the right side, we've got uh, air ride, all the air ride co compressor and components. The entire car is on air ride. Okay, we've got a full leather interior, um, all custom design. We've got C5 Corvette bucket seats that were all recovered. The gauge housing for all the instrument clusters out of a 59 Buick. And the uh, manual valve body transmission is what the shifters are for and uh, they each advance a forward gear out of the, um, out of the transmission. It's like driving a manual clutch car. 
So it's a full restoration. Was it a lot of rust that you had to patch and Oh, cut? yeah. Here's an example. There's what's left of the floor. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. How long did it take you to build this? This was a 12-year on and off project. Oh, my God. This wow. is what the original design concept was. So that was hand-drawn, right? So just 12 yeah. years ago? Yeah, I had an artist do that, yeah. Okay. And this is the final outcome. Yeah. Lastly, if they want to learn more about it, where, where can they find you, Brett? <laughs> or just or nowhere? Oh, I'm, you don't just have... a, I'm just an individual guy, yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs>
I watched this car be debuted in Hot Rod magazines, and that's what made me want to build a Pro Street car. Long story short, in 2004, a friend of mine owned this car, and I begged him all the time that when you're ready to sell it, let me know. I have two other Pro Street cars. My buddy owned this from 04, and when he finally said he was selling it, I was like, holy shit, I'm actually gonna own it. And at that point, I own a piece of history that I grew up loving and watching and, and always wanted. And I did my own little touch to it. I put a 572 inch all aluminum big block with a Hogan sheet metal, BDS 1071 billet stage three, electronic fuel injection, Bogart wheels. I just kind of updated it, but this is the original paint. This is the original car from 1989. And I have all the magazine articles from when I was a kid. I kept, and I can't believe it's mine. This was my first Pro Street car that I owned. I bought this car when I turned 18 and about the year 2000, I turned it into a Pro Street car. But this was a photo shoot at Ocean City, Maryland. And this is my Camaro, and this is my, my Beretta, but at the time it was owned by my friend Lou and my friend's Tim Cars. So I've had photo shoots with this car. We've went cruising together. And like I said, now eight, nine years later, it's in my garage next to my Camaro. So I've always loved this car, always knew it. And like I said, it's amazing to, to own it. Hyper Speed Media.